Welcome to the CA Unified Infrastructure Management Tunnel Server Creation video. In this video, I will show you how to create a tunnel server using Admin Console. As your UIM environment grows, you may decide to add secondary hubs to your UIM domain. You might want a secondary hub for failover in the event that your primary hub goes offline, or you might want to control some of your robots with one hub and some with another. For example, you might use a secondary hub to group all the robots that are in one physical location. Let's say your company has offices in New York and Los Angeles. If your primary hub is at the home office in New York, you could set up a secondary hub in Los Angeles to connect to the robots you have there. Having a hub located near its robots reduces the network latency that can happen over long distances. When you first install a secondary hub, you may need to define it as a static hub so that it can be seen by the primary hub. Using static hubs is simple to set up but has drawbacks. Connecting two hubs statically is not secure. The traffic between the two hubs cannot be encrypted. If you have one or more firewalls between your hubs, you cannot fine-tune the connection to suit your firewall rules, and in large, complex environments, you can't specify how your hubs connect to each other. That is, you can't enforce that primary hub A only talks directly to secondary hub B, and that secondary hub C only talks directly to secondary hub B. An arrangement like this is called a tiered hub architecture and can be a convenient way to group multiple hubs in a complex domain into a logical tiered hierarchy. You can resolve these issues by using tunnels. Using tunnels between hubs is a best practice. Tunnels allow you to create a secure encrypted connection between the hubs in your network. If your hubs are separated by a firewall, you can use tunnels to specify the ports the hubs can use, and you can define the logical hierarchy the hubs use to communicate with each other. A hub can have many tunnel clients, but only one tunnel server. I will create a tunnel server on the primary hub using Admin Console. I log into Admin Console as the administrator and select the primary hub. Notice that the primary hub is indicated with a star. When I click Robots, a list of robots attached to the primary hub opens. I click the primary hub robot. General information about the primary hub robot opens. When I click Probes, a list of probes controlled by the primary hub robot opens. Tunnels are created and configured in the hub probe. I scroll down in the list and locate the hub probe and click the Inline Actions menu button next to it. In the drop down menu that opens, I select Configure. The hub probe configuration page opens in a new browser tab. Select Tunnel Settings. Be aware that the default tunnel port number is 48003. If I needed to use a different port number, due to firewall rules for instance, I would select the checkbox Ignore Controller First Probe Port, and then enter the tunnel port number I want to use in the First Tunnel Port field. Since I want to use the default tunnel port, I won't make any changes on this page. Next I select Tunnel. Select the Tunnel Active checkbox. Click Save, and then click OK to refresh the configuration. Next, I select Tunnel Server. I need to initialize the certificate authority for the Tunnel Server by providing my organizational information. All of these fields are required. The Country Name field requires a two-character country code. If more than two characters are entered, you will receive an error when you attempt to save the certificate. For this example, I'll supply a password for the server certificate and accept the defaults for all the other fields. Notice that the common name is automatically generated and cannot be changed. Now that my information is complete, click Actions. Perform Certificate Authority Initialization. I get a success message and click Reload to refresh the configuration. Here you can see that my Tunnel Server Certificate Authority has been created and initialized. The Tunnel Server is active and running using the default tunnel port of 48003. Notice that two certificates were created. One has the common name Tunnel CA Mac Prime Hub, and the common name of the other is the IP address of the tunnel server. I can use either one of these common names when I create a client certificate. By default, there is no encryption configured for a tunnel. The security cipher is null, but I can select a security cipher to encrypt tunnel communications. Click the down arrow in the security setting box and select a built in cipher to use. I can select low, medium, or high cipher security or select Custom. Next, enter a common cipher specification in the Custom Cipher box. I'm not going to cover custom ciphers in this video. 
For this example, I've selected the null cipher. This means that the communications over this tunnel will not be encrypted. In a real-world situation, you should select at least medium-level encryption to secure your CAUIM hub-to-hub -hub communications. Here I have scrolled down to the Client Certificate Configuration section at the bottom of the page. I always check the Common Name field because it defaults to the user ID I am logged in with. This is not what I specified in the server certificate. I can update this field to match one of the common names that were just created for this server certificate authority, or I can enter an asterisk so that any common name is acceptable. I re-enter the server certificate password I specified when I created the tunnel server certificate just to be sure it's correct. Then I click Actions, Create Client Certificate, and click Reload when I get a success message. After reloading, the page is refreshed. I scroll down to the Client Certificate list near the bottom to see that a new Client Certificate entry now exists in the Client Certificate list. I continue scrolling all the way to the bottom of the page where I can see my new Client Certificate. I verify that it contains the common name I specified, which in this case is the asterisk. And I can see the new Client Certificate in the Certificate box. This is the certificate I will need when I create the Tunnel Client to connect to this Tunnel server. I need to make a copy of it so that I can supply it to the Tunnel Client. I will describe this process in the Tunnel Client creation video. To save the certificate, I click inside the certificate box, click Ctrl A to select the entire certificate, and Ctrl C to copy it to the clipboard. To save the certificate, I open a text editor like Notepad and paste the entire client certificate into it, then save the file. Remember, I'm going to need this certificate later on when I create a Tunnel Client on the secondary hub. Now that I have saved my client certificate, I scroll back to the top of the page. It is important to scroll all the way back to the top because there are two Actions buttons on this page with different options. Click Actions. Start Tunnel. Click Reload to refresh the configuration. Click Save and OK to refresh the configuration. My tunnel server is now running and ready to accept connections from one or more tunnel clients. It is OK to close the hub configuration and return to the main admin console page. In the next video, I will show you how to create a tunnel client and connect it to this tunnel server. For more detailed information about CA Unified Infrastructure Management, refer to the CA DocOps platform. Or visit the CA UIM community to join in the discussion. The links can be found in the YouTube description located below this video.